When people say, I have nothing to hide, what they're saying is, my rights don't matter. We're suddenly, instead of we, the people watching the government, it's our government watching us in secret. If government officials, top government officials, will go after a journalist with the resources of the New York Times pretty relentlessly for reporting on national security issues, who won't they go after? When we see writers constraining themselves in those ways, that can only mean that the rest of us are really not far behind. So at every place I look, Lord, I find FBI's. I'm getting sick and tired of government spies. They conveyed very vividly what they would do to me if I did not tell them the truth, what they could do to smart niggers like me. I was a smart nigger because I worked part-time as an artist model and lived in an artist colony and had a typewriter in my shack. Now it appears we face the prospect of two contradictory dystopias at once, open markets, closed minds, because state surveillance is back again with a vengeance. He might make wrong choices, the giver said. We don't dare to let people make choices of their own. Would it not be easier in that case for the government to dissolve the people and elect another? It was clear to him that the United States had lied again and again to the American people. He decided that the papers constituted a history that the public had a right to know. Even if he could somehow lead a charge into the archives, his chance of locating his own file were close to nil. It was in there somewhere, but the opening of the gate hadn't helped him in the slightest. It had only weakened his friend, the Stasi. He did not believe what he saw, and always fancied that every man led his real, most interesting life under cover of secrecy. I'm saying this not as a traitor, but as an Iranian. I will not keep silent, even if death looms on the horizon. You know what the best part is? They never write anything again. It's just like that. <laughs>